Tree treatments are the foundation of direct-to-garment printing along with the fabric and the t-shirt itself. What we need to do is actually apply the pre-treatment to the shirt and cure it so that we can get a smooth foundation for the inks that we're going to print with the printer onto the shirt. Before we really dig into when and how to use our pre-treatments, I wanted to discuss a few things that are pertinent to your understanding of the direct-to-garment industry and the words and terminologies that we will be using. If you're going to print with white ink, you have to pre-treat the shirt. This means you will have to use a pre-treatment such as our Image Armor products, apply it to the shirt and heat set it to give you a base or a primer, if you will, for the white ink to sit on. This primer allows the white ink to bond with the shirt as well as not allow it to soak into the shirt. This gives you the white opacity required and needed to give you a nice bright white on any color fabric. CMYK only or CMYK printing is when we take and print only the colors cyan, magenta, yellow, and black onto the fabric. Typically this will be done on a white or light colored fabric without the aid of an underbase. So we're taking the full colored image and printing it directly onto the shirt utilizing the cyan, magenta, yellow, and black inks to accurately reproduce our full color image. The white underbase is printed so that it gives a base for the CMYK inks to sit on top of. Typically, the white is either a solid white or it is a gradiated white. And this all depends on how your printer or the RIP software renders this white underbase. It allows the cyan, magenta, yellow, and black to be able to accurately reproduce the true color spectrum that they're supposed to produce on any colored shirt outside of a white. So on a white shirt, you don't typically need a white underbase because you have the white of the shirt that allows the CMYK to accurately reproduce. On anything other than white, such as mid, dark, and black shirts, or even light pastels, you can utilize a white underbase to allow you to accurately reproduce the colors in your design on any colored shirt. The white highlight is just that. It's typically the white in the design that you'll end up seeing when you look at the shirt. This white highlight can be printed on top of the white underbase as an extra white to give it more pop, especially on darker colored shirts or it can be printed as a standalone on light and pastel colored shirts. This means you can print CMYK plus a highlight white, which means cyan, magenta, yellow, black ink only with white at the same time. I get asked all the time, hey, you guys have three different pre-treatments. Why and when would I use each of those pre-treatments in my direct-to-garment printing process? I sort of joke about it, but as you can see, we have a white bottled and two black bottled shirts. White bottles for white and light colored shirts, black bottles for white ink printing on dark colored shirts. That's the simple explanation. But let's take a look at each of these pre-treatments closer up and why we would use them. First, let's take a look at the Image Armor Light Shirt Formula. This here is essential if you want to do a variety of great looking CMYK prints on white and light colored shirts. So let's take a look at 100% cotton and why we want to pre-treat even these shirts. 
Now, technically, you don't have to pre-treat a cotton shirt because the inks for direct-to-garment printing were designed to work on natural fabrics. However, with the use of the light shirt formula, we can greatly improve the quality of the print, get brighter colors, more vibrancy, and detail that you won't normally get on a standard cotton untreated shirt. So, if we take a look at this in a close-up, you'll see that the left side of the shirt, the colors are much brighter. The black in the eyes are very dark compared to, it's a black, but it's not a real deep, rich black. Plus, the colors are much brighter and the detail is much more crisp. This is because the light shirt formula allows the ink dots to remain where they're supposed to be. On an untreated fabric or fiber of the cotton shirt, it's going to want to bleed out a little bit. This will cause the image to look a little fuzzier and the colors not be as bright or vibrant. This is one reason why you would want to pre-treat a shirt with the Image Armor Light shirt formula. 100% polyester fabrics. The Image Armor Light Shirt formula is great for printing on white and some light colored polyester fabrics. If we take a look at our print here where we did this side of the shirt with the Image Armor Light Shirt pretreatment and left the untreated side available for printing, you can see as we look closely at this image that the blacks are super deep and rich when compared to the untreated side. The reason for this is, and why all the colors look brighter and the image is more vivid and sharp in detail, is because polyester fabrics in general want to wick moisture away. Well, our inks are water-based. So for any DTG ink on a polyester fabric, that fabric is going to want to wick the moisture away. That's why it causes the blacks and the colors to look muddy and not nearly as bright. The Image Armor Light Shirt pretreatment formula allows you to achieve super crisp, detailed images, deep, rich blacks, bright, vibrant colors. Plus, it will give incredible wash durability for your CMYK prints on these 100% polyester fabrics. One note though, you won't be able to use the Image Armor Light Shirt formula for printing white ink on dark colored polyester fabrics. That's not the functionality of the Light Shirt formula. It's designed to work with 100% polyester, white, and light colored fabrics. But always do your testing prior to any production run because some of the dyes in some light colored shirts may react adversely, causing a pretreatment box on the shirt, and you wanna test that prior to committing to any production run that you do for a customer. 50-50 fabrics. Because they're composed of 50% cotton and 50% polyester, we're going to run into some of the same problems that we do on 100% polyester fabrics. This being that your colors and your blacks may not appear as bright or vibrant and not as sharp or crisp. A perfect example of why you want to use the Image Armor Light Shirt formula on a 50-50 shirt would be this safety green shirt right here with just black printing on it. If you take a close look at the word security printed across the front of the shirt, you can see the left side of our shirt was pre-treated with our light shirt formula. The right side has no pre-treatment at all. Again, the polyester wants to dull the colors and sort of spread out the dots that are printed onto your shirt. This makes the black not so black. It looks more dullish gray black than anything. But the right hand side looks deep and rich. It is a vibrant black that really stands out on the shirt. This is one of the reasons why you would want to use the Image Armor Light Shirt formula on a 50-50 shirt. This is a perfect case example to showcase why you can get better results 
simply by using the LightShare formula to help you improve the quality of your prints. The next question I get quite often is, you've got two versions of dark shirt formula. When do we use those? Well, let's take a quick look. They both will work out great for printing white ink onto a garment. However, the Ultra is actually a little stronger and will gel the white ink faster than the dark shirt formula. In general, this comes into play when you're doing one pass printing and you need to gel the white ink faster than you may normally would with the dark shirt formula. However, there are some caveats with that. Because it gels the white ink faster, the potential is there on lighter color garments to discolor or interact with the dyes of the shirt more than what the dark shirt formula does. So let's take a look at some of the different types of fabric and colors of fabric to see when and where we would use the dark and the ultra formula in our DTG printing process. What we're going to do is we'll classify these by color or types of colored shirts and we'll take a look at when we may or may not use the dark or the ultra formula. To start, let's take a look at 100% cotton black garments. Black is the easiest and probably the most widely printed colored shirt in the DTG arena. In this case, for 100% cotton shirts, the dark and the ultra will work good for that application. You'll get great whites and be able to print a great looking print on that colored shirt. Now, if you're doing a one pass print, you may want to utilize the ultra formula to gel your white ink faster. That means you're printing your white ink and color in a single pass. However, both the dark and the ultra will work. It just depends on the speed of your printer and the needs that you have for your particular DTG setup. In 5050s and blends for the black color, you can utilize either the dark or the ultra still to get great looking prints. Now, the problem with the polyester is when you go to press it, due to the polyester content or the synthetic fibers within that, a lot of times the colors of your print can dull if you're heat pressing it. So you can utilize either the dark or the ultra to get great looking prints. Now the key to this is making sure you get a good solid white onto your shirt. Now part of the problem with blends and tri-blends are the fact that it does typically have polyester in the fibers of the shirt. And polyesters and the dyes that they use tend to want to dye migrate at most typical temperatures that your ink does cure at. So what you will want to do is more than likely drop the temperature of your ink and cure the inks longer to make sure that all the inks cross link and create a strong, durable looking print. Now, if you're utilizing a heat press, I would suggest minimizing the pressure because 
temperature, pressure, and time typically are what cure inks on a heat press. And applying more pressure into a synthetic fabric like this will tend to mush the color inks into the white ink layer, dulling the colors. And then in addition to that, the potential for dye migration will also be an issue and dull those colors. We don't want either of those. The best suggestion that I can give you is experiment on your own and test and do some wash testing. However, extending the cure time and lowering the ink temperature can often yield really great results. And this will apply to all of the 50-50s and polyesters that we're dealing with here. But in general, the thing is, is you can utilize the dark shirt formula or the ultra to get great looking prints on 50-50 fabrics and blended shirts with our Image Armor products. All right, black polyester. This is probably one of the biggest questions we get all the time at Image Armor is, can I print polyester? The answer to that is generally yes. And the easiest to print outside of white polyester with our light shirt formula would be black polyesters. Now, we will caveat all of this by saying it will depend on the type of fabric that you're printing on as to the results you will get. However, you can get incredible results utilizing our dark or ultra shirt formulas. I prefer to use the ultra just because it does gel the white ink faster. And we're dealing with a polyester fabric which will typically want to wick moisture away. And on the black polyester, this makes our job easier because it can hide a multitude of sins. Our best results that we've seen have come from certain brands of shirts and typically mostly what we call the bird's eye mesh fabric. I'm not saying you can't do other types of fabrics, but probably the easiest for you to print will be the bird's eye mesh fabric, such as what you see here in this picture. Again, you can heat press these inks onto the polyester fabrics. However, be aware that dye migration can occur. The other issue is that when you heat press polyester, it tends to change the surface of the fabric. On a lot of the bird's eye mesh fabrics, you don't see it nearly as much if you're heat pressing but you wanna make sure that you do it very lightly on the ink cure. To do this, you can reduce the pressure of your heat press and also drop the temperature down. This will mitigate and reduce the dye migration on the black shirts, but on black, it's not typically as big of a problem as it is with a lot of other colors. You'll note that as you progress in testing, Many colors in polyester can be problematic, while others are not very problematic. Black is one of those, and you can get great looking prints. Another thing that people will say is, oh, that looks kind of gray on the black shirt. On a bird's eye mesh, that is actually not entirely true. What's happening is the open mesh holes within the fabric allow some of the black to show through surrounding the white, giving it the appearance that your white is not nearly as bright. If we look at it under a microscope, you can see that the fabric and the fibers are actually coated in white ink and securely and firmly attached. It's just an optical illusion. Again, this is one of the issues with polyester and there are no magic bullets within the DTG industry to make polyester printing easy. With most printers on the market and our Image Armor pre-treatments, you can do black polyester printing relatively easy. However, it will vary slightly different from doing a 100% cotton shirt. You'll want to vary your time, temperatures, pressures, and also make sure that you're utilizing a good fabric for polyester printing. So if anybody says, oh, you can't print polyester or you have to use a special ink and our special printer, that is not true. 
dry our image armor products on some black polyester and you'll find typically that it will work and wash incredibly well for your DTG setup. All right, now let's take a look at some of the, what we would call dark colors. This would include navy, reds, royal blues, those types of colors. A side note with some of the dark colors, specifically red, they can be problematic because of the dyes that they use within the shirts can react with the DTG pretreatments. And by this, when you apply the pretreatment, you may get a slight discoloration between the color of the shirt and where the shirt was pretreated. An interesting note though, is a lot of times when you heat press the red shirt, the dyes will change anyways. And we have seen where that dye may or may not change back even after it's heat pressed. So find and use a good quality red shirt when you have red shirts to print with the least amount of interaction with the dyes. Some will work great and others won't work necessarily as well. And that just comes down to the dyes within the shirt and how it reacts with the heat and the pretreatments. Okay, 50-50s in red, which typically will be one of the hardest colors for you to DTG print. The reasons for this, it's similar to the black 50-50s in blends, but the issue is dye migration. Reds will be the worst. However, you can still utilize either the dark or the ultra to actually get decent results. The key to all this is reducing the temperature of the cure on the heat press or your conveyor dryer and also extending the cure time. You may have to do some experimentations because the dyes in certain red shirts will vary greatly and some will dye migrate more than others. However, you can get great looking results on 50-50 shirts, even the reds, with direct-to-garment printing while using Image Armor Ultra or Dark. Now, one of the big questions is always the tri-blends. We've found that a lot of times, the Ultra will work great on tri-blends. If you run into an issue where there is scorching, and that could be due to a variety of reasons with the dyes in the fabric, interactions, and even the fabric itself, you can drop down to the less aggressive dark shirt formula to get great results. Again, there will be a lot of testing that you may need to do, and there's so many variables and different types of shirts out there, even within tri-blends, that we can't tell you exactly what and how to do every particular shirt. However, the general rule of thumb is that either the dark or the ultra will work great to help you get great looking prints on tri-blends. And on tri-blends, one thing to note, such as this shirt here, is the fact that heat can discolor the dyes within the shirt itself, which means unheated portions of the shirt versus a heated portion, say on the heat press, can cause a discoloration. That's without any pretreatment on it. Just take note that sometimes over time, say a 24 hour period, that color may return back to normal and it may not. That is the key here. So just be aware of that. You can get away with it probably by running it through a conveyor dryer to make the entire shirt heated up and those dyes more uniform. But when printing tri-blends, you may need to adjust some of your techniques and how you print to get great looking results. Yes, you can get a great looking print on a lot of varieties of 50-50s and blended type shirts. What you may need to do though is experiment a little bit. On certain colors, you may find the dark will work better. The general rule of thumb is if Ultra is causing you a problem potentially with staining, drop down and try the dark shirt formula. Also, 
the quality of your final print may need to be adjusted by your printer settings and laying down a little more ink or on the pretreatment side by applying a little more pretreatment. This is where the experimentation of your pretreat machine and your DTG printer all come into play. It's difficult for us to explain or tell you exactly how much pretreatment you need to use because it will vary from shirt to shirt and manufacturer to manufacturer. General rule of thumb though, the heavier weight the shirt, the more pretreatment you will need to use because there's more shirt fibers there to soak up the pretreatment. So heavier shirt, more pretreatment, lighter shirt, less pretreatment. The darker the color of the shirt typically will require a little more pretreatment because of the darker color. Lighter colored shirts, you can typically reduce the amount of pretreatment and still get away and get a great looking print with less pretreatment because you don't need to hide as much color with your white ink. Light colored fabrics. This is where it gets to be a little more interesting and will come down to the quality of the shirt and the dyes used in that shirt as to which pretreatment you should probably try using. So for light colors, it would be like your lighter pastels, light blues, athletic grays, or ash colored type shirts. That is where you would fall into the light shirt category in DTG printing. The general rule of thumb here is you can probably utilize either the dark or the ultra shirt formula to get great looking prints on 100% cotton shirts like this one. If you run into an issue where you are seeing staining, you can try one of two things. You can try reducing the amount of pretreatment applied to the shirt to minimize or reduce that burning or staining, or try the dark shirt formula at the same settings. And this is because the dark shirt formula is not as aggressive as the ultra and will still give you great looking prints and wash durability. 50-50s and blends in light colors. Again, you will have to do some experimentation, but typically you can utilize either the dark or the ultra again to get great looking results. Even on colors such as this fluorescent safety green shirt with a white underbase underneath of it, with proper application, you can get a great looking print. If you run into an issue where you may have a slight discoloration because of the color, and a safety green would be a good example or a light blue, you can reduce the amount of pretreatment used to minimize that or get rid of it completely, or you can switch down to a less aggressive pretreatment, such as the Image Armor Dark Shirt formula, and still get great looking results. So, light 5050s and blends are basically similar to 100% cotton shirts as far as the procedures to get great looking prints. It is also possible still to deal with dye migration on these lighter colored shirts. It probably won't be necessarily as dramatic as the darker colored shirts. However, it can still be an issue. So you can reduce the amount of pressure, time, and length of cure to get great looking wash durable prints utilizing Image Armor products and your DTG printer. And finally, light colored 100% polyester fabrics. You can achieve some incredible prints on light colored 100% polyester fabrics like this yellow bird's eye fabric that we printed here. A lot of times the issue with lighter colored fabrics are the dyes that they use to make the polyester shirts. These dyes a lot of times are not of very high quality and can react with the pretreatments, causing a pretreatment stain or boxing on the fabric. However, that's why you need to do testing to find what will work in your direct-to-garment shop. Typically, 
if the light shirt formula won't suffice for your light shirt printing and you need to have a white underbase underneath of your print, then you would want to either use the ultra or the dark shirt formula to get the best results on 100% polyester light colored fabrics. One issue you will run into with light colored 100% polyester fabrics is the wicking nature of the polyester. Because we have to put a lot more white ink onto the polyester fabrics, the moisture or water in the white ink is going to want to wick out into the surrounding fibers of the shirt. This may cause a hazing or an actual bleeding into the surrounding fabric outside of the printed area. Now, this may or may not wash out, or it may dry. The big thing that you will have to watch out for is the amount of extra colored ink that you put on top of the white. Because that moisture is already in the fibers of the shirt, it's going to want to wick out the colors into the surrounding fabric also. This will render the shirt and the print unusable for your end customer. It is possible to print 100% light colored polyester fabrics with our Image Armor products. You just need to understand your printer and the settings and how it lays down ink onto the shirt, as well as the pretreatments and the fabric interact all together to give you a great looking quality print. So, some quick tips for pretreated shirts you can pre-treat and store your shirts for an extended period of time, at least with the Image Armor products. We recommend storing them in a cool, dry place out of direct sunlight. Prior to printing on a shirt that has been stored for an extended period of time, make sure to heat press it to remove any moisture that has recollected back into the shirt and the area of the pre-treatment. This will end up giving you a much better, brighter white underbase for your printed product. In addition, we recommend that everybody wash their shirt prior to wearing them. Also, it's recommended to keep unwashed shirts out of direct sunlight until they have been washed. I hope that this video has helped you understand the Image Armor products a little bit better and when to use those products on a wide variety of fabric types and colors. If you have additional questions, please visit our website at www.imagearmorpt.com.